going guys this is Brandon from USF1 sorry for the late video it is obviously Labor Day weekend and today is actually Labor Day uh, or just a bank holiday I don't know if you guys actually call it Labor Day over um, anywhere outside of the United States not too sure about that I'm sure you guys don't but uh, you know just watch the Italian Grand Prix and you know I had to agree with the internet you know that race was quite boring um, I have to admit but obviously with Lewis Hamilton taking his 69th pole, breaking Michael Schumacher's overall pole numbers, um, you know, overall for a career, uh, you know, he finished where he started. So of course it's going to be kind of, kind of boring. Um, that is kind of, you know, like how Formula One's been kind of lately. Usually whoever has pole and you have the most powerful car, especially like, you know, Mercedes. And uh, you sort of just, you know, walk away with the win from race start if so long as you have a good race start. Which Hamilton usually doesn't have, sometimes doesn't get a very good start off the line. But, uh, you know, sometimes this car looks like a boat getting off the line. But, you know, he ended up, uh, you know, getting off and you never saw him again. So, you know, of course, Mercedes ended up winning with a 1-2 finish. But overall, like, you know, it was, it was quite a, you know, obviously with qualifying being like three or four hours long. I never actually got to watch it. Thank thankfully, I didn't waste my time doing so. Um, the exact order was of, of the grid was a matter of considerable confusion. Um, confusion owing to the large number of grid penalties imposed. Um, nine drivers total shared a uh, grand total of 150 places of grid penalties. Um, this is the second highest number of penalties since um, seen at a race. Uh, Monza two years ago also had 168 places of grid penalties were applied. I don't know how many drivers that that was actually who actually took all those penalties, but yeah, 150 places this year, 168 places grand total is the record also at Monza 2 years ago, which is uh kind of insane to see. But uh, with all those penalties, you also got to see Lance Stroll starting second, who ends up being the youngest front runner starter to um at 18 years and 314 days. And then Esteban Ocon um, achieved his highest starting position to date with third. And I believe he and Stroll slipped back in the race um, because, you know, they are in a Williams and a Force India midfield teams. And uh, which followed Vettel to finish on the podium for the 10th time this year, obviously with third. Um, but then Botas slipped into second. Um, but overall, the driver of the day, I actually would have to say, I, I don't think it's, I don't think it's like hands, I think it's like hands down that it's Daniel Ricciardo starting, you know, P, P12, making up 12 places, um, finishing fourth in the race. This is the third highest climb by any driver this year, all of which have been achieved by Red Bull racers, of course. Um, Ricciardo made up 14 places from the start at Silverstone. Verstappen also gained 13 at Shanghai, but uh, yeah, and then also Daniel Carter also set the fastest lap of the race um, It is also the ninth of his career putting him level with Danny Danny Hume and Ronnie Ronnie Peterson and Jacques Villeneuve um, Jacques Villeneuve, but uh, yeah guys you already know the top four um, Overall incidents obviously Palmer ended up having a DNA, uh, DNF um, after his little incidents and five second penalty that he imposed on himself for uh, you know trying to for Alonzo trying to pass him and then into the chicane and so Palmer just sort of went off into into the curbs and I think like he scraped his floor underneath um, I actually I think he did that multiple times but overall that was the one that put him out because uh, he, <laughs> he ended up taking a five second penalty for leaving the track and then passed Alonzo again while he was off track to use it an advantage so um, leaving the track and leaving the advantage was the reason why for the penalty, um, which is sort of why you usually get it. So, uh, yeah, it doesn't really matter. He came P20. And then uh, Van Dorn, Stoffel Van Dorn, you know, Alonzo's teammate, ended up having a DNF. I think it was also like the second to last lap, um, which was kind of unfortunate. So, overall, he just ended up becoming P19. He's usually pretty good at least bringing the car home, which was Alonzo's day today. But, uh, yeah, unfortunate for McLaren altogether. Uh, but that you like, but Erickson did come P18, so Alonso did come P17, so at least beat one t one car <laughs> um, overall on track. But uh, you know, disappointing day for Erickson, Alonso, and Verline accordingly. Uh, Verline obviously coming P16, Grosjean coming, um, you know, starting P20 after his crash and qualifying. Um, he sort of got into it on turn, um, well, not not turn one, turn two of the chicane. 
uh, well, it's part of you know, like the the turn one and two chicane. Um, he sort of got into it with with uh, Daniel Ricardo. He looks like I don't know if Grosjean mounted like it almost looks like he mounted the the chicane and sort of damaged his front wing um, on the rear end of Daniel Ricardo's car. Obviously, it didn't it didn't do the Ricardo any harm because he ended up just taking a bunch of positions, um, you know, 12 overall um, in the race, but. But after that, like, Grosjean seemed to have, like, major, major problems with his car. And he dropped, like, 30 seconds behind, like, even, like, uh, P, like, like, at the time, P, P19 at the time. So, I don't understand what was going on there. It seems like, like, we should have just pitted him right away and changed his front wing. But I was also suspecting maybe there was some, something wrong with underneath the car, his aerodynamics or things like that. But, no idea why. Didn't, didn't hear any, any news, but, uh. Yeah, P, that's a P15 for Roman Grosjean. Um, Carlos Sainz putting in a solid P14. I'm sure Toro Rosso wanted a better result. But, uh, you know, Monza is a straight up power circuit and the Renault power cars. Besides the red, besides Daniel Ricciardo's car, did not seem very, very uh, strong here at Monza. And then Hulkenberg coming P13. Uh, you know, at least he finished above his teammate Palmer. Palmer didn't look very good at Monza at all, so. Uh, Hulkenberg didn't didn't look much better, but at least he finished the race. Uh, yeah, it's a P13 for Hulkenberg. P12 for Ki Daniel Kvyat. He didn't torpedo, uh, you know, S Sebastian Vettel or anything like that. This is kind of where that happens, where uh, you know they had some of their incidents in the past. Uh, but he ended up keeping his nose clean today. Uh, well, on on Sunday, and um, you know, pretty. Pretty solid showing for Daniel Kvyat. I'm sure you want a points finish, but wouldn't everyone? Pretty solid showing for Toro Rosso. I'm sure Williams and uh, you know Force India are kind of happy that they got all the points from all these other midfield teams. But uh, K Mag coming in P11. We almost had P10, but Verstappen ended up bringing um, you know cutting us off and you know took the points fair and square. I'm not saying that uh, you know he did anything wrong because Kevin Met like you know it's racing. I'm not really too mad. That they were that um, you know that K Mag and Verstappen got into a little bit of a scrap. It was a good battle overall. I don't think there was anything illegal about it. Just wish that we had a better car to uh, you know bring bring the fight to Red Bull to Verstappen and make sure that doesn't happen again. Hopefully we put some upgrades on their cars and uh, you know we can be more competitive on the year. Uh, and then overall, yeah. So th that's it for everyone for the non-points paying finishes. Um, you know, we already know that Hamilton, Bottas, Vettel, and Ricardo are one, two, three, and four. Um, Ferrari, Raikkonen, Kimi Raikkonen coming in in P5. I'm sure he wanted, you know, uh, it would be great to see, you know, a Vettel, Raikkonen, one, two. The Tafosi, all 185,000 on hand, would have loved to have seen that. But, uh, you know, it just wasn't in the cars today. The Mercedes cars were just too dominant. Um, th they're going to have a dominance over the rest of the year, like I said. Uh, but yeah, Reckon incoming P5. Ocon, oh my god, coming P6, beating him and Perez ended up coming, um, you know, didn't come into blows. They, didn't, they weren't even next to each other at all um, during this race, so which is kind of great to see. They didn't get into it at all, so therefore they, they each could just race their own race. But yeah, solid showing for Esteban Ocon, P6, great showing. He ended up, he, he didn't end up passing his overall rival, Lance Stroll, who actually had a pretty pretty respectable race finish at p7 you know obviously but he he started above Ocon and obviously Ocon started right behind him and you know and all the other cars you know the faster cars got in front but overall Ocon still beats Lance Stroll but six and seven for both of them is a pretty solid showing for midfield teams they both uh, you know bested their their teammates overall because th those teammates are actually had more experience than both of them uh, Felipe Massa p8 you know uh, got, got beat by Lance Stroll but uh, you know pretty o overall great day for Williams um, also I have to say like it like the camera shots kept going to Lance Stroll's like family in the in the pit garage I had to say Lance Stroll's sister is pretty hot just saying um, don't know her name well, if you remember though maybe <laughs> Um, Esteban, um, Sergio Perez coming P9, Force India, two points for them, uh, for him. Pretty solid showing, I'm sure you wanted to beat Esteban Ocon, but Ocon just seemed overall better on this track than him, so I don't know 
what's going on with Perez. Maybe he's a little bit distracted, not with all of his uh, contract talks and all that, all, all that fun stuff. But it doesn't seem like Force India was very comfortable at. Well, at least he wasn't very comfortable at Monza, at least in his car. But uh, yeah, and then Verstappen, he ended up having, you know, a a right front blowout on lap. I think it was either lap two or three. Um, Massa collided into him at turn one. Um, at the turn one chicane, Massa to blame, but the uh, move wasn't going to work um, at all because Verstappen was trying to pass Massa, I think, on the outside. It just uh, it just had no chance of working, but they ended up coming in to, coming to blows. Uh, Verstappen ended up, you know, like uh, I think he broke his front wing, and his front wing pieces went underneath his right front tire, uh, which ended up popping, and he had to go all the way back. But, you know, he ended up, I think he came back out like P16, he made up all those places back um, and finished the race at P10. Uh, what do you guys think, guys? Do you think, uh, besides Daniel Ricciardo, who else was also the driver of the day? Also, I would have to say it was actually Max Verstappen for putting his car, uh, bringing it back from actually having, um, you know, a pretty horrible start to the race. Here are the uh, dri current driver standings, current constructor standings. Yeah, guys, leave a comment down below. Uh, if you have anything to say, I would love to hear what you guys got. We have Singapore in two weeks, and I'm looking forward to it. Ferrari always are pretty strong here, so we'll see if uh, Hamilton can be can uh, best, you know, the Ferraris here at their uh, at a pretty strong track for for Ferrari. You never know, but like I'm guessing, the long wheelbase of the Mercedes cars will actually be at a disadvantage here. So. We will see, but that's in two weeks, guys. So I will see you then. I'm Brandon from USF1. If you are new here, subscribe down below. Hit that subscribe button. Drop a like for this video for the for the Tafosi for the uh, you know 185,000 strong at Monza. Uh, great showing at Monza. It was a great overall show um, on the you know TV wise. I just think I just wish there was a little bit less commercials. But yeah, guys, subscribe if you are new. Slap that like button. I'm Brain of USF1. I hope you guys have a great Labor Day, bank holiday, overall holiday. Um, thanks for watching, guys. Peace.